With over two weeks left until the 2023 season starts and testing is well on its way, let's look at the F3 drivers for the 2023 grid. Mine is that one seat still waiting to be filled by high tech. Welcome to episode three of Formula Talk, where we're here to discuss today the F3 drivers. Joining with me today is Tom. Hello. How are you? Not too bad, my friends. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. But first, if you enjoy this podcast, we would love it if you could leave us a five-star rating on Spotify or a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. And if you're one of the 70% of people who have not yet subscribed to this channel, please consider helping us out with a like, subscribe, share, or follow. Let's get into it. Starting in the order of the constructor standings from last season, we have Prema. Now, I do preface this. I might butcher some of these last names. I do apologize. This. Tom, are you probably going to be the same as well? Uh, yes, I, I'm. I'm afraid I'm, I'm not. I'm not exactly fluent in many many of the nationalities of the drivers we're about to talk about. As, um, aside from professional waffling, so uh, this could be could be quite entertaining. Yeah, there's a lot of different nationalities on the grid this season, so it's going to be really exciting. And you're going to hear so many different acronyms about the different styles of Formula Racing. We have something called FRECA, which is the Formula Regional European Championship sponsored by Alpine. You have the FR Asian Championship, the FR Middle Eastern, uh, Italian F4, Euro Formula, so many. So I apologize again for if we're going to keep on ranting about FRECA for sure. There's a lot of drivers that have come from that um, series and also from the FR Middle Eastern Championship from previous seasons and also that are currently racing this season in 2023. So starting off the grid, we have Paul Aaron, who is an Estonian who is currently 19 years old. Last season, he raced in Freca and he also raced in Freca the year before and he finished third both of those times. As mentioned, he's a rookie and he's also part of the Mercedes Junior team this season. Joining him is Dino Bergevin and if you... Do watch Freca. He was actually the 2022 champion last season. Again, another rookie coming in. He's also, alongside his Formula 3 season this this year, will be racing in Formula Regional Middle East champion. He currently is standing in eighth place, currently, with there's still about two to three races left to go. And he's also part of the Ferrari Driver Academy. And rounding out the last driver for Prema, a familiar face into Formula 3 is Zach O'Sullivan, the British driver 17, who is 17 years old. In 2021, he was the GB3 champion um, and raced with Carling last season in Formula 3, where he finished 11th. He's also part of the Williams Academy. And then a cool thing that he was able to do was in October 2022, he was able to drive the Aston Martin AR AMR 21 around Silverstone due to claiming the Autosport BRDC award back in 2021. I guess because obviously he won GB3, that was his prize. How cool is that? That is indeed pretty cool. So yeah, I mean the 2021 Aston, perhaps not the first guy that someone someone would have picked to, to drive front from the 2021 fields. You'd have thought the Merkel the Red Bull would be up there. But um but I mean beggars can't be choosers, and that's not a, it's not a bad thing to say. Hey, here you go. You 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 won an out, you won an outstanding award, and now you get to drive a more or less current Formula One car. Have fun, you know. It's uh, you know it, it's it's it certainly, it certainly wasn't a bad car by any stretch. Um, fun fact: the BRDC or the, the Young Driver BRDC awards used to be sponsored by McLaren. I can't remember when it changed to Aston Martin. It was in the last few years. So a couple of years ago, he would have won. Um, uh, so you'd have won a drive in 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 uh, the twenty twenty one McLaren, which. Which uh, you know, which which would have been quite nice. Um, which, which one would you prefer, the Aston Martin or the McLaren? Well, I wouldn't fit in either, to be fair. But um, <laughs> but but if 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 I if I had a choice, I would. And I see, uh, in terms of how good the cars are, I would have said the McLaren. But because I'm a big Aston Martin fan, mainly because I wrote cars, James Bond, all that, I would have also liked to do the Aston Martin. But I th- I think I think on the balance of things, for the race car, I'd have said the McLaren. Same. I I mean, I'm not so a secret McLaren fan, so any opportunity to kind of get into uh, a McLaren seat, all for it, for sure. And so that's Prema. <clears throat> so next team who finished second was Trident. Now they have all rookies. This is the first, one of the first teams we'll probably discuss that are all rookie dry, uh, driver lineups. 
Most of them are coming from Freca, but we also have um, a champion in the midst. But first, we have Leonardo Formanoli, who's uh, the 18-year-old Italian driver. Uh, last season, he finished eighth in Freca, and he's also um, currently racing in the FR Asian Championships uh, taking place this season. He was also last season Freca's rookie champion. He finished the highest as a, his first year in Freca, um, the top the top rookie pretty much for that. Joining him is the Brazilian 18-year-old driver of Gabriel Botetello. Uh, he was also in Freca, finishing sixth last season. He also competed in the FR Asian Championships in 2022 and finished 14th. Once again, as mentioned, he is going to be a rookie into F3. Um, he's also, and I'm going to mention this probably a few times, and same with Tom, he's part of the Fernando Alonso management team. There's a lot of drivers that are part of it. Most of them are Spanish, but I think he's, off the top of my head, he's one of the non-Spanish drivers signed to his man- uh, Fernando Alonso's management team. And that was in September 2022, so not that far long ago. And joining Trident for his rookie year is the Euro Formula 2022 champion of Oliver Gother, the 18-year-old German driver. However, he has raced in F3 car before, as last season he sat in Campos to help support the team due to one of the full-season drivers having an injury. Also, I guess racing's in the family because his father is currently racing in the GT World Challenge European Sprint Cup. So that sounds so cool to have father and son racing in the same seasons. Yeah, uh, you know, that that sounds like something you get, you know, like when you see like Kevin Magnusson racing with his dad in, um, in uh, a, 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 a choice, it was in the Mon or some form of endurance mm-hmm. series, or like when Alex and Martin Brundle raced together in, um, in, in, in sports cars or whichever series it was. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I do like to hear that. And you don't get that a lot with sport where father and son can, can sort of play or compete side by side because, you know, because you don't really get it in football or rugby or stuff mm-hmm. like that. But in motor racing, you do see it. Yeah, and there's also another father and son uh, current driver duo as well in the F3 grid, which we'll discuss later on, which is uh, Sebastian Montoya and his dad, Juan Pablo Montoya. So (laughs) that's awesome as well. Oh, imagine being at a race and you're racing and your father's racing like a different series at the same time, like a Super Cup with F3 on at the same time or F2 on the same time. That sounds like such like a great family event. That would be amazing. And and that that that'd be one heck of a day out as well. Oh God, definitely <laughs> for sure. Moving a bit further down the grid, we come to the ART drivers. So the first one we have the twenty-year-old American Kalen Frederick. Uh, this is his third year competing in in Formula Three. Last season he raced with High Tech, where he finished seventeenth. And in his in the year before that, which was his debut year in F three, he was racing with Carlin. Alongside him, we have the oldest driver on the F3 grid, 23-year-old Gregoire Sauce. I may well have said that wrong. He is Swiss. I sincerely apologize if I have said your name wrong. Um, but yeah, uh, Soz. Um, he is sticking with ART for, for his second season. Last season, he finished 15th. Uh, and that phrase, once again, in 2021, he was Freca champion, and that was also with ART. Finally, with ART, we have Nikola uh, Tosolov, I believe you say it. He's a 16-year-old Bulgarian, the youngest type on the grid now. Um, he's the 2022 F4 Spanish champion. Uh, he is an Alpine affiliate. Uh, well, he was an Alpine affiliate in March, 20, in March 2022. But February 14th this year, uh, just, just yesterday, he was promoted to a full member of the Alpine Driver Academy. How is that for a Valentine's present? At least he got something. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he is also under Fernando Alonso's management. Uh, he took 13 podiums out of 21 races in the Spanish F4 Championship in, in that season last year. Next on the grid for teams, we have MP Motorsport, who again have three people racing for them. The first one is Franco Colapinto, who is Argentinian. Nice to see some Argentinians on the grid, actually. Uh, he previously raced in F3 with Van Amersfoort, where he finished ninth. He's also raced quite, quite a lot in, in Le Mans. Uh, he's a Williams Academy driver, 
and he won the 2019 F4 Spanish Championship. Also racing for MP Motorsport is Mari Boya, 18-year-old Spaniard. They raced in Fracker last year with two different teams, uh, finishing overall 10, which is not too bad given how competitive Fracker is. They were also a runner-up in the 2020 F4 Spanish Championship, and they are currently sitting fifth uh, in the FR Middle Eastern Championship, which, which they are currently racing in. Last for MP Motorsport is Johnny Edgar, a name which, which has been heard a little bit more around, around F3. Uh, Johnny raced uh, with he raced with Trident last season, but he did not he did not complete the uh, the season as he was diagnosed sadly, with with Crohn's disease. He did make a return to the to the series and finished twelfth, which you know, you know for, if a driver has to suspend their activities from you know, for, from from any season for medical reasons, we always like to hear that that, that they've made a comeback. Um, yeah, especially if we've talked about with Correa on our previous show. Um, this is his third season uh, with, with, with um, all of them have been with different teams. He used the 2020 ADAC Formula 4 Championship. Um, ADAC, if you don't know, is a German sort of breakdown company, um, quite similar to the RAC or the AA, but on steroids. I know that from Top Gear. Um, see, I do pay attention to the telly sometimes. Um, he is also a Formula Red Bull Junior driver, and his cousin, Jessica Edgar, Edgar apologies, is also part of the new F1 Academy. Back to you, Sophia. I didn't know about, um, do you say ADAC or yeah. ADAC? Uh, Ad- ADAC, uh, ADAC was, was the pronunciation I heard. I, I don't know which one's correct, but it's, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's a very, very big big brand in, um, uh, in, in Germany. Okay, because we've got a few others that have been a part of ADAC as well um, in previous seasons. And you mentioned the F1 Academy. That's now coming into full place. Like, we'll be definitely talking about that in our next episode, also listing off the drivers that are confirmed into that and the calendar that just got released as well uh, today. But again, that's episode four. So make sure you like, subscribe and listen when that gets dropped next week. So as mentioned, another father-son duo that we'll have um, with high tech is Sebastian Montoya. Now, when I say father-son duo, we don't mean that Juan Pablo is coming into Formula 3, but (laughs) obviously his name is legendary. Um, He currently is racing in IndyCar, his dad, so it's a great duo to have. But the Colombian 17-year-old, he was in F3 last season for one of the races to help support the team, again, due to injuries. He raced in Freca and in the FR Asian Championship, finishing 13th and 7th, respectively, last season. Um, He's currently racing in the FR Middle East, and he's currently sat in 22nd. He is part of the Red Bull Junior team as well. Joining him is Gabriel Mini, the 17 17-year-old Italian driver. Last season, in 2022, he was the runner-up Freca driver um, and also raced in the FR Asian Championship, finishing fourth last season. Once again as well, he is also currently racing in the FR Middle East and is currently sat 18th. He is the 2020 Italian F4 champion and part of the Alpine Academy. Now, I've I've mentioned a few times and Tom's mentioned a few times the FR Middle East. The reason why a lot of these drivers do it is because the schedule starts so early in the year, in the season, that it doesn't interfere too much with uh, the F3 season or the F2 season. So they get more opportunities to drive cars, sometimes even with the same teams that they're running with in Formula 3. So it's a great way to build up a nice relationship and also get some more time out on the track and understand these cars a lot better. Now, I'm not going to mention High Tech's third seat because we don't know yet. <laughs> it's still not been confirmed until like since today, probably like an hour ago on the 15th of February when we're filming right now. However, as mentioned in the opening, testing has begun in Bahrain ahead of the season. And currently sitting in that third seat to help with testing is Luke Browning. But it's not confirmed if he's taking that seat or not. Following from that, next team is Van Amersfoort Racing, and we have Caio Collette, the 20-year-old Brazilian driver. He was previously with MP Motorsport last season and finished eighth, 
This is also his third year, so almost been here since the inaugural year since F3 started back in 2019. He's changed teams quite often, I will say, in, in his three years of racing. Um, was part of the Renault Sports Academy, but then was rebranded to the Alpine Academy. But in earlier last month, he was dropped from this academy. Joining him is another familiar face to Formula 3 as Rafael Villagomez, who is the 21-year-old Mexican driver. He's stuck with VAR this season, as he has been for the last two seasons. Uh, In 2022, he finished 24th, and he's also currently racing in the FR Middle East Championship and is currently in P9. And joining up, rounding up the team as Van Amersfoort, is somebody who has come from a different way into Formula 3, and that's the Australian of Tommy Smith, the 20-year-old. He competed in GB3 last season and finished 19th. And that's really it. There's not really that much information. He's been racing a lot more in the Oceanic uh, Australian series, but not that much that's recognized for other divisions, um, European series or, um, yeah, European series or Asian series or um, American series. So interesting. But another family connection, his uncle, Jack Smith, currently races in the Supercar Championships as well this season. Tommy's not the only family member who is currently driving in a 2023 series. His uncle, Jack Smith, is currently racing in the Supercar Championship. Next on the constructors list, we have Rodin Carlin and and their their three drivers. So first of all, we have 17-year-old British driver Oliver Gray. He finished runner-up in the F4 British Championship with Carlin. He's only been a single-seater since 2021, so he is an out-and-out rookie. Um, And he is also a member of the Williams Driver Academy. Partnering him is the 17-year-old uh, American driver Hunter Yaney, Yaney, Yaney. I'm not quite sure how you say that one. I do apologize, uh, Hunter. Not that you're probably listening, I doubt you're listening. Um, if you are, welcome, subscribe. Um, uh, it'll also, it'll also race him for for Rodin Carlin. He competed in Tampos, uh, uh, sorry, he competed in S3 with Tampos last season. He finished 33. He finished 33. That's not an accurate representation because he missed two races due to injury. Which, bear in mind, we have two races a, a weekend. That's a lot of points he could have gone begging. Um, he's also the 2020 Formula Four US champion. Um, so, yeah, so he's definitely one to watch out for. Finally, he's the 21 year old Israeli Ido Cohen. Uh, again, racing for Rodin Carlin. Uh, Cohen is switching back to uh, back to Carlin, who he made his debut with in 2021. Last year, he raced with Jens and finished 26. He's also competed in Formula Region, uh, Formula Region Asia, where he finished 21st. Next on the list, in terms of teams, we have Campos. Uh, you know, very well, very well, very well known name in the uh, in the junior series. So first up, we have Joseph Marti, uh, in brackets, Pepe. Maybe that's a nickname. I'm quite sure. Um, I hope so. Um, yeah, he goes by it. Oh, God, I'm, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so glad you said that. Um, yeah. So we have a Spanish driver racing for a Spanish team in Campos. So the 17-year-old, he's taken with Campos for his second season. He finished 20, 25th in the first year, and he was runner-up in the 2022 Formula Regional Asian Championship. He is also currently under Fernando Alonso's management team, Cal Supreze being a Spanish driver, and he's also racing in Formula Regional Middle East, where he currently lies in P12 in the Constructors. Partnering him in Campos is the 18-year-old British driver, Christian Mansell. No relation to Nigel Mansell. I did actually I did actually look it up because I, I did wonder, but, uh, but no, and, I, and you'd have thought we'd have heard about that by now. Like I said, 18-year-old British uh, British driver. It's his full rookie season. He did sit in in 2022 for Shrews in the in the round of Hungary, um, but this is his first full season in Formula Three. He competed last uh, last year, so 2022 in Euro Formula, where he finished third. He also took part in the GB3 Championship, not to be confused with the former GP3 Championship, which obviously 
merged with Fonda to create this championship. Uh, he finished the GB3 championship in 2021 in third place. And finally, partnering those two is the Australian driver, Hugh Barter. Uh, this is, uh, he is a, again, he's a rookie driver, 17 years old. Um, this is his third year ever in single seaters. So the last two years, he's competed in the 2021 French F4, then the 2022 F4. Uh, he also competed in F4 Spain in 2022, uh, and he was a runner-up in 2021 F4, which, given that would have been his first year in single seaters, not too shabby. And now I'll pass you back to Sophia to just run through the gender drivers quickly. Yeah, I mean, going back to that, he's had three years in single seaters and he's been runner up every single time in that, with no karting history as well. He's quite, according to Wikipedia from our research, very, very, very new into the racing. And the fact that he's finished runner up in a lot of these races is a great feat. So I think he's definitely going to be someone to look out for for the new season. And we have the last two constructors. First up is Jenzer. Um, with the 17-year-old Italian driver Nikita Bedrin. Now, he is also technically Russian, but is racing under an Italian driver's license. He is a rookie this season. Uh, he competed in three different series last season, the F4, F4 UAE Championship, where he finished fourth, the Italian F4, where he finished 12th, and the ADAC F4, finishing in fourth. He's also currently racing in the FR Middle East and is sitting in P16. Joining him, another rookie, is Taylor Barnard, the British 18-year-old. And actually, he literally has the exact same layout and background as Nikita. Again, rookie this season, competed in the exact same three series last season. However, he finished ninth in the F4 UAE Championship, eighth in the Italian F4, and was the runner-up in the ADAC F4. He is currently in the FR Middle Eastern Championship and actually sitting second with only two races to go. So who knows? He might be runner-up in that one as well. And joining them, again, another rookie. So another team, all-rookie lineup of Alex Garcia, the 19-year-old Mexican driver, uh, he competed in Euro Formula last season and finished seventh. He also will be racing in the European Le Mans series in the LMP3 for cool racing. So that was quite a cool difference to have go from F3 into Le Mans. Um, and the last constructor of the 2023 season is PHM Racing by Cherus. Now, you re might recognize Cherus' name before, as that's the original name that they've had since they, their de debut year. However, due to new sponsorship and ownership, they are now being called PHM Racing. We've discussed it a little bit in our second episode as well. So the last three drivers of the grid is Sophia Flourish, who is making her return back into Formula 3. She was the first Formula 3 driver female to ever start. And she's been away for the last two years, focusing more on Le Mans, where she raced in the European Le Mans and finished 13th. But technically, and people might say it's actually her third season uh, in Formula 3, but technically it's her second because her first year in Formula 3 was pre-merger of GP3 and F3 European. So even though it's still called F3 previously, it's technically a second year, but I'm so excited for her to come back. Um, she is the second oldest driver at, 20, uh, at 22. And oh, I, I literally can't wait to see her coming back. Only female currently on the grid as well. So, I mean, could be in the high tech seat as well, another female, but it seems a little bit unlikely. I, I can't wait to see her race this season. Joining her is two rookies. First one is Roberto Farina. The 19-year-old Brazilian driver, he raced in GB3 and finished fifth, and he's also a member of the Sauber Academy, so Alfa Romeo. And the last driver, Polish 19-year-old Peter Wisinski, and I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I do apologize. Um, he competed in Frecker last season and finished 35th, and previously also raced in the Italian F4 Championship. And that's it. That's the grid for this season. So let's take a look at the constructors. A lot of them are actually quite 
they're literally the same as F2 minus the one team of um, Virtuosi. So I feel like we don't really need to go that much into it. The only one I might want to mention is Campos. The team principal, Adrian, is actually the team principal for F2. And he's the only... Uh, it's the only constructors where the team principal is the same for F2 and F3. So can't imagine his workload being the two pr- team principals on a race weekend. I was going to say, I bet he is busy on a race, especially when you have F2 and F3 together on the same weekend. You know, you know, imagine being like, oh, can you attend all the F2 stuff and all the F3 stuff, please? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you, know you, you do wonder how much, uh, you know, how much of that he could actually do. Yeah. And you do have Stephanie Carling as well. She's the team principal for Carling for F3. And I think, is it her dad or brother that is the team principal for Formula 2, I believe? Uh, I believe it's her father. I'm not too sure, to be mm-hmm. honest. Uh, I was, but I'll tell you what, I'll have a quick look whilst, <laughs> whilst, we're, whilst we're running through the um, yeah. running, running through the teams. And then also Jenser as well. Team principal is Andreas Jenser. So there's a lot of two principles this season in F3 that are pretty much related or closely associated to the constructors this season. F2, not so much. But again, we've discussed a lot of that in our previous episode in episode two. But let's run down the points and how they finished last season. Obviously, because we listed the driver order based off the constructors, we kind of know what the layout is. But let's look at some of the points. So first off is Prema finished first with 355 points. Following up from them is Trident, who finished second with 301 points. And then a big gap between Trident and ART. ART finished third with 208, so nearly 100 points difference, which that's crazy. Um, Then we have MP Motorsport, who finished fourth with 95 points, so not that far off from ART. High Tech, Finished fifth with 150 points. Van Amersport finished sixth with 91 points. They are technically rebranded back in 2022, so they've actually been around around for a while. They used to be Van Amersport by Mercedes in the debut year, but had changed um, from it last season. As mentioned, we mentioned before, Roden Carling. So they have changed their name from Carling to Roden Carling. And as mentioned, Stephanie Carling, the team principal, is Trevor Carling's wife. Trevor Carling is the founder of Carling. So definitely it's a family-run constructors team. And I think that's amazing. And they're also UK-based as well. I think they're nearby Silverstone, if I remember correctly. Campos, another family-owned constructors team with Adrian, as mentioned, running F2 and F3 as team principal. They finished eighth with 53 points. Also, he is the son of the F1 driver as well, uh, Adrian Campos. Then Jenser Mosport uh, finished ninth with 26 points. And then, as mentioned, PHM Racing by Sharu, so previously known as Sharu's. Um, we don't have any information because this is the first time they've been fully rebranded, similar to how Van Amersport was last season. Um, however, Sharu's last season scored only one point in 2022 but they had the record for the most drivers in one season with eight different drivers in the three seats partially some of that was due to injuries partially due to scheduling issues and partially due to funding as well so but yeah there was just no way to get points if you had eight different drivers coming in and out throughout the entire season yeah, that sounds like a little bit of a merry-go-round, to be honest. Yeah, hopefully with the new lineup, they'll be more secured in getting some points. We all needed some points. Yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll be good for good for Shrew to you know to 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 do better in um better in in F three. Well, that's the grid. Minus that one seat from high tech still to be confirmed for the twenty twenty three season. Next episode, we're going to look at all the testing for F2 and F3 that's currently going in Bahrain between February 14th to February 16th. And we'll give you the whole rundown of the new F1 Academy as well. we got some new information coming out 
almost on a daily basis, new drivers being announced, the schedule being announced. So we're going to deep dive all of that in next week's episode. Four Minute Talk is available on YouTube, where hopefully soon enough we'll be filming live once the season kicks off in two weeks' time. But you can also find us on Amazon Fire, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Verbal, and Pocket Cast. Just search Formula One Grid Talk to find our show, Formula Talk, as well as all the other shows that we run, which include F1, Fireside Chats, which provide previews and reactions to qualifying and race results. Please consider supporting our channel on Patreon so we can get better mics, lights, and better recording equipment. Also, make sure you subscribe so you're the first to know when each new weekly episode is released. We'll be soon back with plenty more F2, F3, and everything Formula Talk. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Tom, for joining me again. As is always, me. And it was lovely speaking to you. Bye. Bye.